This Amiga is able to connect to the internet to the Wi-Fi card you see in the side here. And despite not having any extra memory in the machine or upgrades, it's able to run all the software necessary to connect to the internet. I bought this device from a seller called Retro Ready and he had a very good feedback so I bought from him and I didn't regret it because although it was easy to insert the device when I got it setting it up was a little bit tricky for me being new to Amiga OS and um, Sir Lucas very kindly um, offered me some after sales support to get it up and running so I thought it would be a, a good thing to uh, put this information in a video so he doesn't have to go through that again. So hopefully, Sir Lucas, you can point people to this video in the future. So I've logged into my router and you will need to make sure that um, rather than the N standard, that your router is set to WPA2 or AES mode at BG. Otherwise, this won't work for you. We're going to download some files that I've linked uh, beneath the video and one thing you will need is a way to get these files onto your Amiga. So this device here is one way of doing that and use it to get the files onto my machine initially. Um, I also added the compact flashcard option. But if you have another way of getting things onto your Amiga then by all means do that. So the first thing we need to do is download all of these tools we need. Um, I have them all linked beneath in the video, but I'll go through them here just for the sake of being thorough. Um, this one, LHA.run, you may not need. I'll, I'll talk about that later, um, but let's just get them all on the system anyway. And this one is Roadshow. Um, this is a demo version that gives you 15 minutes of connectivity and if you like it um, and if it works for you, you can uh, go and buy the full version for about 20 quid. I'm missing something. Card patch. Okay, so these two, card patch and card reset. You may not need these either. I'll talk about those later. Yeah, that's everything. So here we can see um, all of the downloads are in the downloads folder on the machine. We've got a shell open and uh, it's all going to be command line based from here on in. So we can see here that the LHA command is installed already, but with Workbench 3.0 which I'm running, um, it wasn't there by default after the install, so I had to put it there manually. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. Um, LHA will be used to extract all of the other applications which are packaged as LHAs. So just copying it into the C location uh, does the trick. And now we'll be able to run LHA on all of the other archives to help us uh, get to a place where we can install those. And so now we actually get to use LHA on the PRISM um, archive. And we can see there it's in the downloads folder now after we refresh. We have to manually refresh to see things here. It's not like more modern systems. And running the installation, you just add your network name, SSID, and the password for your router. And generating the key can take quite a while. I think it may have taken 15 minutes on my own Amiga. Okay. Next we move on to Roadshow. Um, we've installed the Prism driver for the Wi-Fi card at this point. So Roadshow is going to use the driver to connect to the to use the hardware to connect to the internet. So first we extract Okay, so skipping ahead there after a few minutes of extracting, we update the downloads folder to see the Roadshow demo. 
and we double click the install roadshow icon and we choose the intermediate user option um, select the defaults here and proceed um, yeah we just proceed here because it says it'll create the roadshow uh, full directory in the hard disk for us uh, not all installers do that, so you need to be careful, or else you'll end up with files uh, splattered all over your your lovely uh, hard disk. Okay, that's Roadshow installed. So now I can go into the Net Interfaces directory in storage and copy Prism 2 to the Net Interfaces directory in devices. And the double slash means just to go back two levels. Okay, so now it's copied. So next we want to, just for the purposes of testing the work we've done so far, we actually want to disable um, the wireless manager from running initially. So I go into the user startup script and I comment out uh, two entries. The first one is just a line that uh, yeah, that one that says run nil wireless C wireless manager Prism 2 device. We comment that out and we comment out the begin roadshow section so that when we reboot, uh, it doesn't load it up automatically. Actually, before we run the test, I might just install the rest of the software. So in the downloads directory, I extract card patch, which you can see just has the actual executable and a readme. And I do the same with card reset. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, there's an exception here. If you have um, used the card uh, transfer, the CF transfer tool from Amiga Kit, um, you'll already have this installed and won't need it. So I won't uh, go any further with this here, but you basically just copy it to the C location, just like we did with LHA.run in the beginning. Um, and you can see where those downloads have been extracted there. But uh, I'll move on, like I say, to the next section. Okay, so on second thoughts, I'm just going to make a quick note about um, the card patch and card reset tool. So if we use Ed to edit the startup sequence, I'll show you the two lines that get added to the startup sequence. You'll need to make sure there's something similar for yours if you're adding them manually and not using the um, Compact Flash PCM CIA tool from Amiga Kit. So these two lines here that I'm um, highlighting, see those? You need those. And next we extract class act, which uh, the FTP client needs to render some of the widgets in its GUI. So it's like a, li a GUI library for the user interface. And this takes some time too, so skipping on ahead. All files successfully extracted. And here we can see the installer. So we go in here and we choose intermediate user again. Uh, we never use novice during this. And the default's there. And the default's here again, you can proceed. I'm saying yes here because it's an Amiga 1200, it's an 020 processor. Okay, you can proceed. And again, proceed. And that's class act installed. And an identical process again for REC tools.
and finally AMI FTP. Um, I've always changed to use the hard disk and as it says there it, it will not create a directory no directory will be created so you need to make one if you don't want to get a spill so at the end of um, hard disk here which is usually system or DH0 on other systems I think uh, I put it in AMI FTP and it will create that for me and I click proceed I choose my language and proceed do you like to install another language? No. I'll say yes to that. So the default again all the way, more or less. And accept and proceed. And that's AMI FTP installed. We're very close now. So finally I can show you this on the live system. Uh, I run the wireless manager prism2 command and you can see the light comes on in the PCM CIA card and we're told that we have uh, connected control event connected um, which is clearly a success there uh, there's another command we need to run immediately after this and we won't always have to do this but if you remember we commented out something in our startup script so here we do add net interface prism2 and let's see how we get on it's trying to connect to the router now and i can okay so all those ip addresses are correct we have a connection we're basically connected to the internet now um now at this point if you wanted to run a browser i probably should have said you do need to upgrade your machine because most of the browsers need about eight megabytes of ram but we can run the ami ftp uh client so i'm just going to move that down so it's in the shot and this is a really simple client to use. If you'd used anything like FileZilla, you'll immediately know how to use this. Um, you basically say new site and you fill in the details there, which I won't do now because I already have one pre-configured. So I click here <clears throat> to connect to my Ubuntu machine. And in a few seconds, you can see we get a directory listing. Here we go. There's a directory listing from the Ubuntu machine, so we're working now, we're up and running and we're connecting to FTP servers and that could have been an FTP server anywhere on the planet really, it didn't have to be a local one. And uh, I might just uh, download a small file just to test the connection because after all that hard work it's a bit too good to be true, so let's just see. And yeah, that's it, that came down. And finally, we need to undo the changes we made to the user startup sequence so that the wireless starts automatically. And when that's done, save, reboot and enjoy.